Hello everyone, Ken here back with another video where I review your projects, resumes, and portfolios. Special thanks to Ahilan for submitting his GitHub project for today's video. Ahilan just finished one of the data science boot camps. I believe it was the Flatiron School. And they have a very specific way of telling you to set up your projects in readmes. So I'll be able to go through and talk about if I think that this is a good approach or there are some adjustments that need to be made. I think that Ahalan does a, does a really good job in general, and I'm excited to talk about some of the ways he can still potentially improve upon what he's doing and make him more presentable, more desirable to employers. If you're interested in having your project, portfolio, or resume reviewed, definitely comment below. Also ask some questions. I've been answering them at the end of these project review videos, and I'm going to be doing that at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. Uh, also, email me at kenji.ds at gmail.com with your, with your portfolio, <laughs> um, and that, that is where I keep all, uh, all of the backlog. That's where I track everyone that I'm going to be reviewing. So you will not get reviewed unless you send me an email there. Without further ado, let's jump in to Ahalan's GitHub profile. So this looks pretty good. I like how he has pinned his top three data science projects. I also think that this is a, a good picture, and uh, there's one thing I'd like to mention about his about me statement. So he's looking for a data science role to both test and strengthen my machine learning skills. So I think that in general, it's a good thing you're looking to improve, but when we're applying to companies, we want to be thinking more about the value we create for them than the value that they're going to create for us. So whenever I'm talking to a candidate, if they're talking about themselves and what they've learned and all the things that, that they're doing, that's all well and good. But taking it a step further, if they're talking about how they can help the company solve problems, help make the company that, we're, that they're applying to make money, that's a really good selling point for me. So there's no problem talking with, about yourself a little bit, but talk about what you've learned and how you can apply it. So maybe this would be looking uh, for a data science role where I can help companies solve challenging and interesting problems and where I can also learn new data science skills and keep up to date with the latest methodology. To me, that would be a little bit more appealing here. Now, I like that his LinkedIn's here and he also has a Medium profile, so we'll take a look at that closer to the end of the video. So I've gone through these repos and all of the readmes are relatively good. I'm going to go in and just highlight one of them, you know, for the sake of time. He really was talking, uh, he wanted me to specifically review this, uh, his hotel review NLP project. So we'll dive into that. I will say one, one thing I want to note is if he's looking to work in the hospitality industry, this is probably a really great project to do specifically for Hilton. Um, if he was looking to work maybe not for Hilton, doing but still in the hospitality industry it would be really cool if he could just transfer this project over and use uh, you know marriott or uh, some other rating system or some i'm sorry some other hotel that's out there so i highly recommend if you're interested in working in a specific industry doing projects related to it uh, maybe even another one related to hotels if that's the niche that he wants to go down if he's not looking to, to work in that industry um, I would recommend a, a couple more projects in general. I mean, he has three data science projects. In most of my videos, I always recommend four. So at least one on classification, regression, clustering, and then some advanced topic. It's either NLP, computer vision, or something related to deep neural nets, convolutional neural nets, or current neural nets, whatever that might be. Or, or some time series data is also uh, relatively interesting as well. So I, I would tell Ahilan to I would recommend him doing another project. They don't all have to be really big and in-depth like the three ones that he's done, but it, having, having four and being able to fill out the portfolio a little more is pretty appealing to me as an employer. It's not something you have to do, but it's something that can create um, a, a little bit more interest. The more projects you have, the higher chance that an employer will see one that they're really interested in on a topic they're really interested in. So that's just something to think about there. I'm trying to think if there's anything else um, associated with just the general overview. 
Let's jump in to the Hilton project. So as you can see, this is a really long README and he uses the collapsible, um, the collapsible menu or, or feature really well. Let's kind of go dive in and, and look through the README and, and see if there's any, anything we can pull out. So I really like the, the upfront summary. I think this is, this is a great starting point. If I were him, I would maybe, this is still a pretty long summary, I'd maybe have a too long didn't read that's only two lines that talks about what is the project and what value does it create. We always wanna be mindful of the recruiters or the manager's time. And if they can get an understanding of what the project is in one or two lines, that's always really valuable. He also created a app, a front end for this. And I would actually bold this. I, it, when I skimmed through it, I didn't realize this was clickable and I, I could go in and experiment with it. That is one of the best possible things you can do for one of these projects is productionize it, make it into something that people can use, can experiment with, that that becomes tangible to them. And it also leaves a pretty good impression. So we'll also experiment with this and, um, and, and see how that works in a little bit here. Um, he, you know, he has his contact info, we go through and he explains really well what each of the files do. This is not something I've mentioned before, but this is definitely a really good practice. He also talks about what technologies he used. So one thing that I do recommend is having a requirements.txt file. So that allows people, if they're trying to replicate this project, if they're trying to do it on their own, to import all the libraries that you used. So this is something um, that helps set up the environment so you know exactly what packages are associated with this. You have the exact versions of the packages, very similar to what, what Docker would do for an environment. It keeps all of, um, you know, all of the things that you need, all the modules, whatever that might be, um, the, the same for, for me to run this. So whenever I pull down a repo that doesn't have one of these, I might have to change the versions of TensorFlow or something that I'm using, and that's really a pain. So you're doing the user an extra favor uh, by including uh, requirements.txt. It also looks really good to employers because they're like, oh, they know other people are gonna be using their code. They're making it as easy as possible for someone else, uh, which is a very strong thing. So we have really great organization here. I cannot say enough good things about the organization. Um, it might even be going I wouldn't say it's going overboard. This is this is really good, uh, and I like the naming convention of where they can find it. Uh, the web scraping, a great. This is a great example. Uh, maybe I would even have just a little picture up here of what the web app looks like. That could be a fun way to to add just a little more visual element. But so far, really strong. Uh, it's great descriptions of of what everything is. Um, a little bit more about the class imbalances and the description. One thing I'm a little bit curious about is why he decided to keep these as categorical and not make them uh, continuous. That would be something I would like, uh, he might have explained it, but I, I, I guess I didn't see it, but um, you know, what if he had taken that approach? What would the results have been? So we're looking at something like root mean square rather than uh, accuracy, precision, recall, whatever that might be. So that would be uh, one other way you could take this that would make this analysis a bit more, more robust. You don't get too many problems where you can compare um, classification and uh, regression models in the same data set. And this, you know, where the data is, I guess like it's ordinal-ish, you could potentially uh, fudge it either way uh, or experiment with either side uh, of, that, uh, of that problem. So definitely something I would be interested in if I'm wrong about that, uh, because honestly, I didn't think too much about that before I said it. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Um, I, I really like the, uh, some of the graphs that he has. The word clouds are always a nice touch as well. Um, Again, I, there, this is really well done in general. Um, and this is something I highly recommend in almost every project I see. So have a table where you have all of your results. That's really solid. 
I will say, I think it's not till this very end where we hear about what the results are. And realistically, I would like to see that in, you know, very, very high at the top because the odds that anyone, a recruiter, manager, whoever that is, makes it all the way through this is pretty, pretty low. Um, not that it's not good and interesting. It's just we're talking about, okay, I have 100 candidates or, you know, it's probably 15 to 20 people that we're bringing in for the interview. If I'm spending 30 minutes looking through each profile uh, or each project that they have, I'm not going to have time to do my actual day job. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is a really nice way to show your results. Again, I would be very interested in looking at uh, the results on a continuous scale as well. So it looks like he compared a neural network and if I recall, he did use some NLP. So there might have been some embedding, etc. And that performed significantly better. This is the type of thing I'd like to see right at the top is that, hey, we tried a couple different models. This was the best one and this is why. Um, if we're including adjacent score, the accuracy is really high, but I, I don't I don't know if that's a legitimate, you know, use case there. Um, I think that that might be a bit more of a stretch. You could do that though, if again, you had made these continuous or, or treated them as continuous, um, you could have said how far off they were um, in general. So a different way to think about it, very fun. So overall, this is really well done, super well organized. I think that if you're going you know, maybe even on the further side of documentation, we're going too far, it's better than doing not enough. I will say this is a really big and robust project for everyone watching. Do not feel like all of your projects have to have this level of documentation. This is just a good example. I think that if a lot of your projects have a little bit less, but one or two have significantly more and they're a, a lot more well thought out, they have a good story associated with them, um, that's totally fine. I will also say that he did write a Medium article about this, and he does not link it in the GitHub. So I would 100% link that here uh, because you, you, know, you always, especially with content creation, any of it, you want to link all of your stuff together. Uh, that creates a bit more of a network effect. Um, so he probably links the other direction from the Medium article, but why not link your, your, the blog post? You can see how someone actually tells the story of this. Um, Again, this is really good, and let's fool around with the actual app itself. So I enjoyed, oh my goodness, I'm just cracking under the pressure of typing in front of people. And then let's say uh, the, the room was nice and clean, uh, the, the staff friendly, the, um, I guess the room was a little small and expensive. Though. So this would be about a four star review in my opinion. Let's see what it predicts. Do, do, do. Oh, five. So a little bit off. Uh, let's see if we can make it worse. Bad. Just putting in some keywords, experimenting. Three, okay. So we can get a little sense of how this model works. Um, you know, it might be a little bit oversensitive to some words. So maybe an exclamation point is a positive thing or enjoyed or some of these other words. Uh, it, it looks like expensive isn't one of those negative keywords. Small isn't necessarily, but it, it clearly is producing different results for different inputs that we put in. So I, I like this. It's very clean. It has a nice use case. So, very good job, Ahlan. So let's just briefly touch on his LinkedIn. It looks really good. I like the cover there. Um, I, I like the description. That's a good, strong description. I think Ahlan has a tendency to go a, little, a bit more on the um, on the more documentation side rather than the other side, which again I think is perfectly good. Um, he didn't send me his resume, so I'm not going to go into that. But one thing he did in his resume is he had about a paragraph of uh, about what each project did. And then he had a couple bullets on what tools he used. That's a different approach that I haven't seen very frequently, but I, I don't, I, I like that. I think that that's a nice touch. 
Um, I, it might be a, a bit redundant, especially if you're listing a lot of the skills that you're currently using, but um, you know, talking about the value explicitly and then talking about the tools explicitly is totally fine. Um, you know, he's pretty active uh, and um, yeah, the, again, this, this looks really solid to me. The last thing I want to touch on is his medium profile. And I cannot stress enough how valuable it is to have some sort of blog, some sort of content, show your writing ability. If you can write, I mean, that's one of the main ways you communicate in a business setting is via email. So if you can show um, and not tell that you're a good writer or that you can tell a concrete story, that's unbelievably valuable. So I love it when I see someone with a medium page, uh, when I see someone with their own personal blog or their website, whatever that might be, I highly recommend. I also thought it was kind of funny that he, he has this, uh, this post, how to create a professional GitHub data science repo. Maybe I should, maybe he should be doing this instead of me. I, you know, I, again, his is incredibly good. There were very few changes I would have made. Um, but I, I, I that kind of, that gave me a little chuckle and I read the article. It's very good. Uh, definitely check it out. Um, again, he has the, quite a few things here. So if you're going to do one of these, try to keep up with it. Uh, I, one of the biggest things for me with any form of content is never make a one piece of content. Um, you know, I'm sorry, never make just a single piece of content. So if I make a YouTube video, I can also write a medium article about the same topic and I don't have to do double the work. So if you have a GitHub repo, you've done a project, why not turn it into a medium article? Medium, you can make a couple bucks and you can also get your projects out there. You can get your work out there. Uh, if it's really good, the an audience will accumulate around it. So really good. Thank you again, Ahilan. Now we'll move on to a couple of the different questions that I've got. There were two that I thought were particularly interesting. So first is for the data analyst uh, position, how important are hackathons when job hunting? So for data analyst position, I don't think a hackathon is really important at all, but a hackathon can really set you apart from the pack. I don't know too many data analysts who have participated in hackathons, even if they're data hacks. So. I really recommend doing as many hackathons, competitions, whatever that might be. A lot of these are also used as networking events. Most hackathons have a, a networking hour where, where, where companies come in and just talk to, talk to students or, or talk to people. Um, you know, the companies are sponsoring the event. They're looking for people to hire at these things. So doing hackathons can be very valuable, but they're not integral. They're not the most important thing. Uh, and you can totally get a job without doing any hackathons. I have never participated in a hackathon. That's something I wish I had done, but uh, you know, to be perfectly honest, uh, I, I have not to this date. Uh, the next one is how important are certificates, especially if you don't have much work experience. Is it worth it to get some to prove that you have skills or is it not necessary? So I think certificates show that you're familiar with data science but projects are what show that you have the skills. I would rather see someone with a couple data science projects um, and no certificates than someone with 10 certificates and no data science projects. So it's really important to think about, okay, you know, when you get a certificate, I don't think that that really demonstrates that you have the knowledge. When you've done a project that 100% demonstrates that you have the knowledge. So I would frame it in that sense. So that, that's all I have for this video. Thank you everyone for watching and good luck on your data science journey. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe and turn on notifications and consider watching either this playlist or these videos next.